Hello, for the, so for this first video we're having a look at sheet metal. Um, quite often we need manufacturing tabs for helping the part bend up which we can then break off later. So we're going to look at um, three different ways of doing that. So um, the first way, normally you want your tabs, you want them just on the flat pattern. So if we're doing those just on the flat pattern, we're going to go to our tools tab. Once we've done our flat pattern, to find our edge and then remember we're looking for the red x-axis tells us on the prompt bar at the bottom for that we're doing the flat patterns just remember red when you're doing the flat pattern nice little trick on there we're not going to do any flat pattern treatments on there but what we can do now we've now got the option that if we go back to here we've got this tab option it's the only one that we've got available so we can now go in and draw the tabs in any locations that we want so i'm just going to draw a tab coming up and over on the top on there and then I'm going to draw a little kind of section, so it's going to be, so it's going to be snap, snapped off on that. Let's just tidy, tidy that up slightly. Let's just pop some dims on that. Just constrain that, so he's centered up to that. We'll have that one. Thirteen. So we've got a mill either side, and then let's just dim that up, and I'll get that. Pretty good for us. Let's just check well with we haven't got a definition. I haven't got a definition that way. So I'm just gonna link, um just gonna dimension that to that bend line for now. Okay, so that's got a tab on there, so we can then go and snap that off. So if we close that sketch on there, um it doesn't like that I've done that as an open profile. So I forgot that one, but I'll leave that in, that's fine. So let's just do that as a closed profile, just close those two off. And we're all good now. Um, the depth is automatically defined by the, de by the depth of the material and then finish. Um, so we can now go and, um, so we haven't got any pattern commands, so no, so, um, so no kind of mirror or anything on there. So if you did want to go and add additional tabs, just think about using your sketch mirror commands on there. So if you want to go and mirror that, we can go and mirror that and then just draw, draw, give two points to create our mirror option on there. And that's mirrored. Or if you want to put some more tabs in there as well, so if it's something as simple as this, we can just go fence like those, use the move, make sure we've got the copy on there. Um, I'm going to set the step to 50 mil, just so I'm, just so I'll step to 50 mil, click on that point and that's going to step, step to those increments. So I'll have one there and then one there. That wasn't planned, but that's worked out pretty well. Close that sketch. And we've now got six tabs in there. The, the big benefit of this is when we do go back to our ordered or synchronous environment, we don't have those tabs. But sometimes we do actually want the tabs available in this environment. So um, if we go into ordered environment, go to bend, unbend, just press A on the keyboard, that will do or select a face first and then, and then, and then press A, that's going to unbend everything. So you, you can now work on your flat pattern, go and add the tabs the same way as we did before. So we can draw, we can draw the same kind of profile that we want on here. I'm going to draw it correctly straight away this time. Okay, I'm not going to dimension it up this time. And then we can close that. And then we've got that tab in there. I'm just going to go and just do the same as what we did before. I'm just going to do a move. Make sure we've got the copy on there. Copy that down. Set the step to 25 just to make sure that we can do a couple on there. Close that sketch and finish. And now we can go and rebend. So under the same option on there, we've got rebend. Same option, just press A on the keyboard. And that has rebent that. And we can see how our tabs are there. Okay, so that is option um, that is options one and two on there so what I'm going to do um, I'm actually just going to go back to my flat pattern um, and go and remove these tabs and for this one again I'm going to go to go to here and go and remove the, the tab actually we, we can remove all of those completely so what I'm going to do now with this sometimes we actually want this as a separate model so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new, uh, a new sheet metal part. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do an interpart copy of that part to make sure that it stays referenced to that. I want to make sure that I do this as um, ordered. 
So, so that's going to create links, and then we're going to use from the clipboard option on here. This option on here for the part copy. Um, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to where that file is. So I'm going to go to my sheet metal folder, find my sheet metal document, find that part on there. That's the part that I'm going to bring in. So we can decide whether we're going to bring this in um, in which state we want this to be. So if we go down and do flatten, we're going to create that as the flat pattern. So I'm just going to click that and click apply so we can see that. I'm going to copy colors, design, oh, I'm just going to leave all the rest of those as they are. And OK and finish. So now we've got that as a flat pattern. If we go to tools, flatten, um, that's already flattened. So I can't really do anything. So if I go onto there, I can then go and add a, um, go and add a tab. But notice it kind of won't let me work on here. So I want to add a tab. I can't select anything. Shift. Can't select anything. Normal tools. So here we're going to use multi-body. You might have noticed this from the title. You might have figured out what we're going to do. So if we come back out of our flat pattern tool and go back to ordered. That is again. Tab. You know, not in flat pattern. Shift. Nope. Nothing working. But we can do our odd bot. Uh, Add body. So here we're going to do a add sheet metal body. I'm just going to stick with the, with the um, with the default options. Now, if we click on tab, we can physically go and create these in the same. I'm going to create the same sketch as what we've been doing before. Sizes are slightly different this time. I should have just copied and pasted it via the feature library, but there we go. And we can we can mirror this in the same kind of way as we did on the previous one. So we've got these tabs. I'm just going to move that in the same kind of way we did before. So I'm just going to drag him over just so it's on a different uh, a different face on there. And then close that sketch, and that's going to create those tabs. This time, because we're multi-body, it's not it's not it's kind of making sure that the thickness is the same. Grayed out, we can't change it because it's the thickness of the part that we bought in. But we can but, but we can do that. So I'm going to do. So that one is doesn't like the profile that I've drawn. So I want to do. I'm just going to take that just back to the one option on here and finish. But now notice there are actually mirror commands. So because we've done this as a multi-body, we can actually do <coughs> mirror copy feature. So I can select the feature and copy that. <coughs> and we can also do a pattern as well. So if I want to pattern those, so I can pattern, um, I can select both those features. So I'll just turn pattern along. I'll, um, no, I'll just do pattern along curve actually instead. So that allows me just to do a pattern. Um, I can select an edge, so just select an edge on that. Select the origin point and the direction. And then we can decide on those options. We can choose from these on there. So fixed, we're going to do two at 50 mil spacing. Or four at 50 mil spacing. Not sure whether we're going to end up catching that edge on there. So I'm just going to change that down to 48. And now we've got all those. That's all still in that one design body. Um, it doesn't matter if they're separate design bodies, but if one of those ought to be a single design body, we can now go to the union, select those two bodies, and those will union into a single design body. So you can then have your flat pan with your tabs on linked to your other component. Save that first. Okay, so now if we use component tracker, we're going to see we've got the link to the other part. Okay, so that's the that's the first section. Okay, so for this one, we're looking at this is a problem I got off customer. We've got this part. What I want to do? I want to bring a I want to carry this curve on round and bring it down so it comes flat with that. So what we're going to do with that? We're going to do a contour flange, plain normal to curve. So I'm going to find the edge, or oh, I can't, can't, can't select the edge quite the way that I want. So let's try playing at end. We're going to really struggle to do it that way. So that kind of is telling me that it's probably not going to do it. So most people would probably go, okay, let's go and let's go and create this another way. So I'm going to go on there, make sure we get that the right. So I'm going to use my my P and T and F toggle to to get that with the correct orientation I want. And now I'm going to do 
uh, tangent arc on there. Just want to create that arc coming out of there. So let's um, see if we can do an equal on those two to get those the same. I create a line coming from the end, a uh, tangent. Let's make that vertical. And then let's link that with that endpoint on that. So we've got our profile. So I want it. Lovely, that's going to work. Maybe not. So we're going to do our contour flange. This time we're going to use our select from sketch. Make sure we're on chain. Select the elements. And then take that to there. Lovely, looks looks nice. But what about our flat pattern? So let's go flatten. So I really want that to be my flat because that's the flat edge. Oh no, we've got an issue with that. So is that solid edge or is that the way that we've done it? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to change the way that I'm creating this a little bit on there now. So it's quite nice that I've done that as a sketch because it means that. I don't have to worry about that. So let's go back to our ordered modeling. And let's have a look at another way of doing this. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to leave the sketch as it is. Um, cut out. That can, that can stay as it is. So what happens if we create this as a, as a multi-body now? So let's go add body. Leave that default setting on there. Create that as a contour flange. Select from sketch. Select that. Decide which way we're going to go outside, link that onto there and finish. So now let's do a um, union, let's pop those two bodies together and finish. Looks the way it does. So let's go tools and flatten. Let's choose those same outputs on there. And this time it still failed. So let's have a let's have a think of another way on here. Okay, so let's have a look at rebuilding this in a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do on this, I'm going to come and edit this contour flange. I'm going to go and change this. I'm just going to go one way now. So rather than 250, I'm just going to go 125 in that direction. Notice that sketch has now moved with it. I'm just going to go and edit that sketch. And I'm just going to go and copy the rest of those edges in there using our project sketch option on there. So we're doing this a slightly different way. So if ever you project a sketch, just be aware. Sometimes if you click it, you don't get a, you don't get a proper connect on the end. So just do a connect option on there. So now we've got that, we can go and use we can go and use our contour flange command. So we can find our contour flange command, select the profile, and now we can come that way. Notice it's not going to let us do that because we haven't done our multi body. So we're going to add another body. Now we're going to choose our contour flange command, make sure the materials go in the same way, and then we're going to come 125 that way. Okay, so let's put this cutout in. We need to go in this body, so if we just double click on that to activate that design body, we're going to do our normal cutout. We're going to go on there, I'm going to do a rectangle by, um, by three points. So I can go and snap that to there and just drag that out as far as we need that to go. Close that, make sure that we go the correct way. That's our cutout done. So now we've got these, got these are two bodies, but we want these to be a single item so we can flat pattern these together. So now if we do our union command, Select our two bodies. That's then going to union those together. And now let's try our flat pattern command. So we're going to select that and select that. And now there we go, we've got our flat pattern. So that's what we're aiming for all along. Okay, so think about if we can't do stuff, think about using that multi body command on there. Thank you.